Hi guys, welcome to Brass Boot Camp. In today's video, we're going to be talking about double and triple tonguing. For today's video, I'm going to be using the Arben Complete Cornet Method. The exercises start on page 155. Arben's explanation of how you do double and triple tonguing starts on page 153. Um, if you want to read that to supplement this video, then I think that's a really good idea. So, what is double and triple tonguing? Basically, it's a combination of the T syllable, which you'll all be familiar with, coupled with the syllable K. Double tonguing is a T followed by a K, and triple tonguing is two T's followed by a K. In this video, we're going to be following my double and triple tonguing calendar, which is basically a month's worth of exercises and is selected highlights of which exercise I think you should practice. So week one starts with triple tonguing and it's basically getting you used to saying a combination of the T syllable and the K syllable. Just to explain how these exercises are structured, obviously there's loads of ex other exercises in the Arben. I've chose two or three exercises per day as not to overload you with things to play. So on the first day, there are two groups of T to K, so two groups of triplets. And the first exercise is just basically on one note, getting your coordination there. The next exercise, number three, is coordinating your fingers with your tongue. In. So the, the tongue in pattern is exactly the same. It's just you need to go ta 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 ta, -ta and move your fingers in time with your tongue. And the golden rule for that is your fingers always follow your tongue in. doesn't matter if you're playing single tongue in exercises or anything like that. Your fingers always follow your tongue. The second day, it moves to three groups of triplets. So you've got ta ta ka ta ta ka ta ta ka ta So three groups and then always an extra note at the end. Then it moves through four groups, five groups, and keeps adding an extra group to sort of build up your capacity for your triple tongue in. The first exercise is on page 155, and it's exercise one. And underneath the first bar of music, you see the syllables two two ku two two ku two. In one way, I think the T, U and K, U syllables are really good because that means you have a really good airflow. So if you say the T, U syllable, and you say the K, U syllable, you can see it's quite hard to say the right syllable without having a good airflow. If you've seen many of my other videos, I talk about the ta, ta and T positions when you're going through the range. Whereas I think the ku syllable and the two syllable written in the album is great for airflow, I think also you can think about saying ta, ta, T and ko, ka, ki to help with your range. The first place to start is actually just saying the syllable. So if you look at the first bar, start with the T, U and the K, U syllables and say Nice and slowly, just to get your tongue in the right position. So saying the T syllable, so two T's followed by one K. Once you're happy with saying the T, U and K, U syllables, I would practice saying it with an O syllable, an R syllable and an E syllable. That way, when you're playing the exercise, the low, middle and high notes, you'll have practiced the syllable, which corresponds to the range of the note that you're playing. Another thing to think about is actually, what is your tongue doing when it's saying these syllables? So the T syllable, your tongue starts behind your teeth and actually moves back and down in your mouth. If you're saying to, really down, ta, and the T moves up in the mouth. So you've got to, ta, and T. Always starting at your teeth with a nice crisp T. One more thing when you're thinking about tonguing, the harder you press your tongue against your teeth, corresponds to how accented the note is. So if I press my tongue against my teeth really softly, I get a nice soft articulation. And if I press it really hard against my teeth before I release it backwards, I get a nice accented sound. When you're playing all these double and triple tonguing exercises, I would definitely advise tonguing quite hard, almost accenting each note. So that's the T sorted. So what happens with your tongue when you're saying the K or the Ku syllable? So actually, your tongue's actually arched up at the back and it moves down and forward. And K and K. As you can see with the movement, the Ki syllable is actually quite a tricky one because your tongue actually doesn't move that far in your mouth. So when you're playing your higher notes, you'll find if you're having to use an key syllable, it's actually, it'll actually make it a lot more difficult. I'll be giving you some more top tips about how to combat that key syllable later on in the video. So now you've thought about what our tongue's actually doing in our mouth. So we've got The reason why I like doing the triple tongue in two tuz and one ker 
generally you'll find a ter which follows a ker is slightly more crisp and accented because if you think about how your tongue is moving in your mouth, backwards, backwards, and then the ker fires the tongue back to the front of your mouth ready to start the first of each group with a nice firm t. Practice saying t t k with a nice t and k syllable and then practice t t k t t k t t k t t k and t t k. Once you've done that you're ready to move on and play the exercise. I would advise everyone starting just to try to play it normally first so not too fast you're after a nice clear t and a nice clear k. So remember Two tas and one cut. Etc. So nice and slow to start with, and your main focus is just getting the order of the syllables in, in the right order. So two tas and one cut, and just thinking exactly tongue moving from your teeth back and down for a t and arched up at the back, down uh, forwards and down. For a k syllable. So two two ku. Two ters and one k. If you can play it nice and slowly with a relatively clear distinction between the ters and the ks, then you might not need to do some of these other exercises which I'll explain now. So if you're struggling getting the right coordination, I would advise playing each bar in a few different ways. So I'll just stick with the very first bar for the time being. I'm going to play the first bar once, I'm just going to say the ters and miss out the ks, and then I'm going to add in the ks afterwards. So I'm going to be going ta ta rest ta ta rest ta, and then the second time will be ta ta ka ta ta ka ta. And I'll be playing each bar of the piece in both ways. If you've practiced it that way and you're still finding the cut is not as clear as you would like, then I would advise practicing the whole exercise just using the cut syllable. Ka, 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 for every single bar. You'll find that your k will never be as clear as your t, but you're trying to practice it so it gets as, cl as clear as it can be, so the difference between the t and the k is as marginal as you can make it. I'll play each bar in a few different ways this time. I'm going to do just k's to start with, and then I'm going to do the t with the rests, and then I'm going to do the t's and the k's together. So I'm going to be playing each bar three times. So now I've just been practicing the first bar, but the great thing about these exercises in the Arbor is that it does use pretty much a whole octave per exercise. What you'll find, if I move up to some of the higher register notes, if I'm using too much of an arch tongue position for my T and key syllable, then the sound can be a little bit squeezed. The way to combat that is if you use more er uh and blow faster, then you'll be able to relax your tongue position down to more of a R, ah, so somewhere between an R ah and an E, which gives it a little bit more freedom to move, but also helps you get the high note. So I'll play it just with a really arched T and key position, and you can hear the squeeze nature of the sound. And then I will try and play a little bit louder and then relax my tongue position down slightly to somewhere in between a T and a T. So here's the uh, last two bars, which is the E's and the F's. So I found it really hard. So I was playing quite quietly, and then to compensate because I was blowing quite quietly, I had to do an extra arch tongue position, and you can hear the sound quite squeezed. So this time I'm going to play a little bit louder and move my tongue position down slightly. So that's it. A couple of different ways to practice these exercises, and if you have a look on the calendar, then the first, basically the first week worth of exercises, you're practicing these uh, exercises really slowly and you're thinking about evenness in rhythm, evenness in tone, evenness in the articulation, meaning that the t and the k are as similar as you can make them. They're never going to be exactly the same, but you're trying to make your k just as clear as the t. If you need to do some extra practices on your k, then play each bar with just the k syllable and then add uh, the tas as uh, I said earlier. So on the Saturday and Sunday it says go back and repeat some of the exercises you've done during the week but then start speeding up the exercises. So if you're playing quite slowly at the start of the week, so somewhere like this, then your aim is to get slightly faster during the weekend where you're repeating some of the exercises. So maybe
So when you're speeding up these exercises, it's a really, really good idea to use a metronome. Um, not only does it help with your rhythmical playing, but it also gives you a really nice uh, sort of benchmark of how fast you can do it one week and how much you've improved. It might be how much you've improved during the week, or it might be how much you've improved over the last four or five months practicing these exercises. So I've got my metronome here. Let's set the tempo nice and slow to start with. So I've got maybe... So this is crotchet equals 80 beats per minute. Ta ta ka ta ta ka ta. Ta ta ka ta ta ka ta. So play nice with it, nicely with the metronome, evenness in rhythm, evenness in articulation, and evenness in volume. You might find your cur is a little bit quieter than your t, so evenness across the board. The 10 beats per minute up, 5 beats per minute down method is pretty good. So I'll move my, I was at 80 beats per minute, so I'm going to move up to 90, and I'll try the exercise at 90. So nice and clear, I was quite happy with that. If you're happy you're playing these exercises as well, keep increasing the metronome marking by 10 beats a minute. Once you hit a point where you think it's slightly unclear or you're less happy with the quality coming out of, of sound coming out of the instrument, then you can back it off five beats a minute and then increase it 10, back off five, increase it 10 to sort of uh, zigzag your way up. Uh, and improve your tonguing. At 250 beats per minute, my metronome won't go any faster. At that point, you need to half the metronome so the metronome is playing minims instead of crotchets. So let's do, uh, well, it'll be half of 160, uh, sorry, half of 260. So I'm gonna go back down to 130 beats per minute. Not bad. Uh, I, was, I was feeling that I don't think I can go another 10 beats a minute faster. So let's try uh, 140 in minims this time. I think I'm just about to hit my limit. So that was slightly less clear than I would have, would have liked. Um, so I'm gonna move it back down five beats a minute. So this is 135 minims. Again, that wasn't quite as um, that wasn't quite as clear as I would have liked. So I'm going to go back down another five, back to 130. Cool. Much happier with that. So back up 10 beats a minute now, back to 140. So here we go. So as you can hear, that was much clearer than my first attempt at 140 beats per minute. So when you're happy with uh, the sound coming out of your instrument, up 10 beats per minute. And then if you're not happy with the sound, back down five beats per minute. If you're still not happy, back down another five. Because you'll notice I went up to 140, back down to 135. And then I had to go all the way back down to 130. And then up 10, down 5, until you're happy with all the uh, notes that's coming out of your instrument. Let's go past my failure point so you can hear uh, where I'm really struggling to keep in time with the metronome. So 140, let's go up to 150, and this is probably where I will fail to keep up with the metronome and produce clear notes. Nearly, but you could tell I was really struggling to keep up with the metronome whilst keeping the notes nice and crisp and clear at the same time. I hope that method makes sense. Practice it at a certain speed. If you're happy, move it up 10. Keep moving it up 10 until you feel the notes aren't quite speaking as you would like or you're failing to keep up with the metronome. Then back it down five beats a minute until you're happy and then up, five, up 10 and down five.
So basically that's covered the first week of the, the calendar. Um, I'm going to post another video on the second week, which is all about double tonguing. So basically this, this video is just about, just about the uh, triple tonguing. So one final note on the triple tonguing. Um, it's really important that you have a really smooth airflow. And it's also really important that you have really crisp tonguing. So by that I mean you're not going to be tonguing legato. You're going to be tonguing more staccato and more accented, coupled with a nice smooth airflow. So the two mistakes that people generally do, they either have really crisp tonguing and not a good airflow, or they have a really good airflow and not quite as crisp tonguing as is needed. Those two sort of mistakes uh, sound like this. So the first one where I'm tonguing really hard, but I'm not really blowing through the instrument, that can ten tend to sound a bit like a chicken. So I'm basically, if you hold your breath and say, You can hear the tonguing's really crisp and accented in staccato, but I'm actually holding my breath. And when you do that through the instrument, it sounds like this. So it's sort of squeezed in a bit sort of like a chicken. The other mistake that people make is really good airflow, but the tonguing's not as crisp or as firm as, as you would like. That would sound more like a so sort of more of a doodle sort of tongue. It sounds like this. So you can hear the airflows there, which means the sound's quite good, uh, but there's no definition to each of the notes. To get the best results from your double and triple tonguing, you need to sort of do both things at the same time. You need to have a really smooth airflow coupled with really short, crisp tonguing. And when you put those two things together, it won't be like a chicken, it won't be like a doodle, it'll be in the middle and it'll be, it should be nice and crisp and clear. So. So my breathing's really smooth and my tonguing's really short and sharp. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I've given you some top tips on your triple tonguing. Uh, stay tuned for my double tonguing video which is going to follow shortly and I'll see you soon.